This is a lesson on calculus with parametric equations. I'm gonna go over how to write the equation of a tangent line to a parametric curve and how to calculate the arc length of a parametric curve. The first step in doing calculus with parametric equations is learning how to write the equation of the tangent line. Um, so I have a parametrically defined curve set up here. Um, in XY space, and I'm going to consider some small step forwards in time, delta T. Uh, and I'm imagining us zoomed in very close at, uh, at this curve, and as T increases, I'm imagining the particle moving in this direction. Um, so I can consider two times, T number one and T number two, and then that's going to give me a secant line that connects those two points. Um, so the slope of the secant line is uh, delta y over delta x. So in this problem, this amount right here is delta x, and this amount right here is delta y. And that ratio is the slope of that red secant line there. Um, so what we can do is... Uh, multiply on top and bottom by 1 over delta t. So I'm going to get delta y over delta t over delta x over delta t. Hopefully you can see these two things as equivalent right here. All I did was multiply the top and the bottom by 1 over delta t. So I didn't change the value. Okay, so as uh, delta t approaches zero, the limit of this, as delta t goes to zero, becomes dy dt over dx dt. So this gives us a formula for the uh, slope of the tangent line. So that's brilliant. That's the first step uh, along the way. Okay, so let's name the initial point x naught, y naught. And then I can just use a y minus y naught equals m times x minus x naught. That's just the point slope version of the line. Except uh, since I'm writing the equation of a tangent line, m is going to be given by this formula here. Okay, so that's it. Here is the theory behind writing the equation of the tangent line. Just to be clear about what this means, this means whatever the parametric equations of the curve are uh, in the numerator of the slope is the derivative of y with respect to t and in the denominator of the slope is the derivative of x with respect to t. So let's do a basic example here. I'm asked to write the equation of a tangent line and they give me two uh, equations, parametric equations. Uh, these ones happen to be polynomials in T. Um, so I need to plug everything here into this red formula. So I'm gonna need a point, uh, x naught and y naught, and I'm gonna need a slope, dy dt over x dx dt. So first let's find the point. So x naught is going to be the x at time one. That's what they give me. So this is x of one. So this is gonna be one squared minus three. So that's negative two. And y naught is going to be y at time one. So this is gonna be four times one, which is four. Okay, so I've got the location of the point. Now all I need to do is to calculate the slope of the tangent line. So um, dy dt, remember y is 4t, so dy dt will just be 4. And then dx dt, remember x is t squared minus 3, so this will be 2t. Now, uh, we're gonna do this at time t equals one. I'm not sure you might have seen this notation before where you draw a vertical line like this. This means I'm about to plug something in uh, and I'm gonna plug in time one there. So this is gonna be two times one, which is two. Uh, so this means the slope of the tangent line is the 
y rate of change over the x rate of change, so four over two, which is two. Uh, and that's it, now we're done, right? So y minus y naught equals x times x minus x naught. Okay, and that's it. We wrote the equation of the tangent line, so congratulations. Hopefully you can see that it's really not much of a step further than writing the equation of a tangent line uh, for functions that are defined explicitly. So the next thing that we're gonna need to do is to learn how to calculate the length of a parametrically defined curve. So um, what we're gonna do is construct this thing called the arc length differential. So it's the same picture, it's the same setup, except now instead of trying to calculate the steepness of that red line, I want to calculate the length of that red line. So this little distance right there, I'm going to define to be ds, which is the arc length differential. That's, that's this thing right there the arc length differential. So a lot of times we think of ds as being, so this is just a concept. Um, we think of ds as being a small step along the path. Uh, so dt is changing by some little amount and each time dt changes by that amount, the, uh, the, the particle moves along the curve um, some amount and that amount is ds. Have a look at ds here. Hopefully you can see that there's a right triangle there. So I'm just gonna use the Pythagorean theorem. It comes out pretty quickly. ds is gonna be the square root of delta x squared plus delta y squared. So I know this is tempting and I know we're at the calculus three level, but I just ha always have to point this out. You are not allowed to distribute that square root and cancel out those squares. Um, the math police will come to your house and arrest you if you do that. Um, okay, so I've got a formula here for ds, except it doesn't really help me because these things rely on me calculating some change in x. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna, again, multiply by one. So this is equal to, I'm gonna need a kind of a bigger square root symbol here. So this is gonna be equal to delta x over delta t squared plus delta y over delta t squared. And then all out at the outside there is a delta t. So let, let's just unpack this for a second. So what's gonna happen here is, let, let's just check really fast that these two things are actually equal to each other. So um, if I wanted to take this delta t and move it underneath the square root, right now it's outside the square root, so if I wanted to move it underneath the square root, I would have to square it. And then if I took this delta t squared and I distributed it to each of these two pieces, then those would cancel out with the denominators and I would just have that back there. So that's why um, these two uh, expressions are equivalent to each other. Okay, so these things really should be approximately equal to, and then when I take the limit as delta t goes to zero, I get this expression right here for ds. Let's just go ahead and put that in a box, it's important. So this is called the arc length differential. Again, it represents a small step along the path. Um, it's basically just the Pythagorean theorem. So uh, let's just look at it really fast and see what it does. So what you need to do is basically take the derivative, a lot of times students forget to do that, take the derivative of the function that is the x coordinate and take the derivative of the function that is with the y coordinate and then kind of put them in that a squared plus b squared equals c squared formula. Okay, so that tells us the length of one small little piece of the arc. So now if you have a whole curve, what you do is you uh, chop the entire interval of time up into a bunch of little pieces, dt, and then each one of those little pieces is gonna give you a little tiny ds. What we're doing is we're using derivatives, we're using that straight line right there to approximate a curved length. So the two things that we're looking at is that curve right there, which we're approximating using the tangent line right there. So now 
Um, you take the curve, you chop it up into a bunch of little pieces, and then the total arc length is going to be the sum of all of those little DSs. Um, so now when we, well, so <laughs> the total arc length is going to be approximately the sum of all those little DSs because I am approximating the curved distance with the straight line distance. Um, so then if we take the limit as delta t goes to zero, uh, when we add up a bunch of things, that becomes an integral. Um, so the integral of ds is going to give us the total arc length. Let's do an example. Okay, let's try this example. I came up with t cubed and 3 halves t squared, and then this is the range for t that we have. I'm just going to mention quickly that um, these problems, when you plug functions into this formula, it quickly makes things that it is very difficult to find antiderivatives for. I think you can see trig sub is going to be in play here pretty quickly. Um, so a lot of textbooks really cherry pick these problems um, and there's there's not very many tricks. Almost all of the problems are the same. Um, so let's get started calculating this arc length. So ds here is going to be the square root of, so the formula is x prime of t, so 3t squared squared, x prime of t squared plus so when I take the derivative of uh, y, I'm going to move the 2 out front, and it's going to cancel with that 2 in the denominator. So I'm just going to have 3t squared, and then all of that dt out at the end. Um, OK, so let's simplify this. So 9t to the fourth plus 9t squared dt. OK, so. I'm going to need to calculate the antiderivative of this, and I'm starting to see through how this problem is going to play out. Uh, you can see I can factor out a t, uh, three t, a nine t squared from this expression, and then that can come outside the square root. So I'm going to have three t times the square root of t squared plus one dt. Now the total arc length here is going to be the integral. you got to add up all these little ds's. So I'm going to integrate over the range of t that they gave me. So the integral from 0 to the square root of 8 of 3t times the square root of t squared plus 1 dt. And now uh, hopefully you can see that this is a u sub. Uh, so u here is going to be t squared plus 1 so du will be 2t dt. Uh, so I need to do a little constant compensation in order to make this work. Um, I really need a 2 in the numerator. So I'll pull this 3 halves out front. And then I'll have 2t, bad handwriting, 2t the square root of t squared plus 1 dt. This goes from 0 to the square root of 8. OK, so now this is all just set up for the u sub to happen. The integral from, so I guess I'll change the limits of integration here. So if t is equal to 0, then u is equal to 1, right? If I put a 0 in there for the t. And if I put a square root of 8 in here for the t, then that'll cancel out with the square root. I add 1, and I'm going to get 9 here. So the square root of u du. Now, uh, this is really u to the 1 half power. So when I find an antiderivative, I'm going to add 1 to the power, and I get u to the 3 halves. Uh, and then I have to divide by the result. So then I'm going to put that 2 thirds out front there. So this whole thing is going to become, there's already a 3 halves, and then the 2 thirds that comes from the antiderivative, and then u to the 3 halves power evaluated from 1 to 9. Um, so all those constants in the front are going to cancel. Uh, and I'm just going to have 9 to the 3 halves power minus 1 to the 3 halves power. Um, so that's going to be 27, 27 minus 1, which is 26. Um, so And the units of this would be meters. So 26 meters or centimeters or whatever the units are is the total distance traveled. There's other calculus problems that you can be asked to do. Um, you could also be asked to find the area under a curve, 
or also you could be asked, given a parametric curve, you could revolve that around and then find either the surface area of that curve or maybe even the total volume. Um, but moving forwards with Calculus 3, these two things are really the only two things we're going to need. Um, finding the arc length and uh, writing the equation of tangent lines. So this is fine if you want to do that. Um, it's not going to be necessary for, your, for our future studies. So for now, I advise you to just focus on writing the equation of tangent lines and calculating arc length.